Our nation's first president, George Washington, under the newly formed Constitution in 1789, found himself in an uncomfortable position. As the nation's first chief executive and commander-in-chief, he knew the delicate ground between strength and tyranny. Fearing any comparison to the monarchical government from which America had been liberated, Washington took care to avoid any physical or symbolic references to European monarchs. When the Senate proposed that he be called by the official title, His Highness the President of the United States of America and Protector of their Liberties, an abashed Washington opted for a more modest address of Mr. President. How far we have come in America. Since Washington's modesty, there has been no implication that the President of the United States has ever been handed the unilateral authority of kings, monarchs, or dictators. How unfortunate the present Senate, and all of Congress for that matter, has refused to stop recent presidents from self-nominations to this title. Many kings and monarchs of antiquity suffered from the dangerous narcissistic personality disorder in which a person is excessively preoccupied with the personal adequacy, power, prestige, and vanity, mentally unable to see the destructive damage they are causing to themselves and others. This is not a disorder that should be left unchecked in our leaders. Understand, elected state leaders, your duty is to interpose between your citizens and a central government bent on tyranny. Simply put, you must stake a claim. You cannot remain silent because silence implies consent. George Washington believed when people shall have become incapable of governing themselves and fit for a master, it is of little consequence from what quarter he comes. The Hebrew prophet Isaiah resolved, when God's judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Democrat or Republican, state officials and citizens alike must learn and resist tyranny in all of its forms. This is Jake McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the American View.